All right, welcome everyone. Um, it's one o'clock, so we're gonna go ahead and get started to be mindful of time. Um, but just as a heads up, we are recording this um, webinar today. So you'll be able to find it um, on our website, on our webinar archive, um, as soon as we're able to get it posted after today. So within the next week or so. Um, Thank you for being here today. Um, we're so glad that you have joined us to hear from two of our colleagues um, here at NC State Extension about their experiences with virtual um, program implementation with Faithful Families. Um, Lauren and EB are incredible partners to Faithful Families and um, committed advocates for health in their communities. So um, I have been privileged to know and work and learn from them. Um, and they have so much wisdom and experience to share. And I know you all will benefit from that as much as I have for the past few years. So I'm thrilled that they're taking the time today um, to share with us. Um, Lauren Morris is a Regional Nutrition Education Associate for Steps to Health, um, which um, in FNET at NC State, um, and Steps to Health is NC State's SNAP-Ed uh, program. Um, she covers Region 6, which includes Halifax, Northampton, Gates, Hertford, Nash, Edgecombe, Wilson, Franklin, and Johnston counties. And for those of you who may be from outside of North Carolina, that's the eastern um, sort of portion of our state um, or closer to the eastern portion of our state. Um, Lauren is a licensed and registered dietitian and has a master's degree in parks, recreation, tourism, and sports management from NC State University. Um, she completed her undergraduate degree from East Carolina University in nutrition and dietetics, and she has been working with NC State Extension for almost five years. Um, E.B. Odom is a family and consumer sciences extension agent in Northampton County, and E.B. is a licensed and registered dietitian and has a master's degree in health education from East Carolina University. She completed her undergraduate degree also from East Carolina in nutrition and dietetics, and she's been working with Extension for a little over six years. Um, so thank you, Lauren and E.B., for um, being willing to be here and share with us. And with that, I will hand it over to you. Thank you, Kim, and um, thanks for inviting us and allowing us to come talk a little bit about our experiences. Um, we um, were invited to try to do this virtual Faithful Families program um, towards the, the end of 2020. So we're just gonna kind of talk about our process, like how it got started, um, how we planned for it, how we how it was actually implemented and then um, wrap it up with kind of um, you know our successes, our challenges, and um, suggestions for anyone else who tries to do um, something similar. But before we get started, Kim, if you want to go to the next slide, we just want to know who we're talking to today. So if you don't mind, uh, just put in the chat box um, maybe your location. Uh, what organization you're with, and maybe just a simple yes or no if you have taught uh, Faithful Families before, or uh, maybe if you're interested in teaching it, just so we kind of get an idea of who we're talking to. I do see some familiar faces and names on here, but there are several that I don't know. I see some people have are planning to teach, um, I see some North Carolina. I see a lot that haven't taught, but they're planning or they want to. Some that talked, it um, maybe did faithful families in person before the pandemic. All right. So we have people from all over. Still trying to do some outreach. All right. Well, thank y'all for putting that in there. All right, so um, Kim, if you go to the next slide, it has, um, this is just kind of a brief summary of how this whole thing got started. So um, 
Evie and I worked together and we have for several years. Um, she is the FCS agent in Northampton, but previously she did Halifax and Northampton County. And I was a nutrition educator um, for Steps to Health in those two counties. So um, on this program, um, there was a partner that reached out to us. They're, the organization is called Partners in Faith, and they are actually like a faith subgroup that came out of a local health coalition. So there are several different faith communities um, that are represented in this group. Um, and they have a focus on wellness and they have ongoing monthly um, meetings and EB and I had been part of those meetings in the past, even in previous positions before we were with Extension. And once um, we got trained on faithful families and heard about faithful families, um, she had presented to the group and I had presented to the group and the health department that had been trained in faithful families had presented um, to the group, trying to get the individual um, interests from the churches to implement the program. And EB and I actually worked together with one individual church and did a faithful families program. But then I think it was after that was completed, that one faith community kind of reported back to um, the group about their successes and how much they enjoyed it. So um, then Evie and I got a message um, wanting to know if they could um, participate in um, faithful families, like as a group of different um, churches and faith communities, and even like different health departments were involved in this. So um, so then we really got to talking to Annie and Kim and each other, trying to figure out how, how can we make this work so that this whole group can have, um, per, um, participate in faithful families um, and everything is virtual. So EB and I had done faithful families in person prior to 2020. And then towards like the end of 2020 is when they reached out to us wondering if we could do this as part of their monthly ongoing um, meetings. So, um, yeah, so Kim, I see you didn't introduce yourself, <laughs> but um, she put it in the chat box. So thank you, Kim, for having us here. All right, so um, you can go to the next slide. So that's kind of like the background of how they, they approached us after they had heard about one particular um, church that had participated and completed the Faithful Families Program. So while we were thinking about and planning for the implementation, we had a couple of requests for the group. And one thing was we wanted to make sure that um, the representatives for each group that they had maybe two team members there so that two people could uh, get the information and then they could go back to their individual churches or their individual communities and relay the information that they learned and work on some of the PSC pieces or you know work on whatever their wellness goals were. So um, we were able to partner with um, the local health coalition that this group actually branched off um, of, and they were willing to be kind of the pickup and drop off location and kind of our, um, our key contact. So we had one location where we could give them paper materials like their handouts and um, EB is gonna go into more details about what else um, that they got, but like their skill builders, um, and then a way to, if they want to do paper forms, to return those forms back to us, and then we could get it um, to them. So um, then we also wanted to identify like who in this group that is several, <laughs> like 20 different or more different faith communities who are going to be our key lay leaders for 
the main Faithful Families um, program. So they actually identified um, four different leaders that were willing to kind of serve as our lay leader for the program. So um, then we made sure to do kind of a lay leader training with those. And to, to go through and try to figure out exactly what we we're going to do, we used the Faithful Families Planning Guide. I think EB has put that in um, or can put that in the chat box. Um, it is full of really good information of how to kind of go through um, and plan out how you're going to do this, um, like in person or virtually. So um, we had back to that key, um, our key contact person, she um, definitely helped with the communication. Um, she would send um, emails out on the listserv and um, definitely was very helpful when trying to collect some of the um, paper forms. So, um, we, it just took some planning, but we did um, figure out that since they met monthly, they were already a group getting together. Um, you know, they were a captive audience and um, we would try to go through the program during their monthly meeting when they're already there. Cause they, I think they were already scheduled to meet for two hours. So we were a portion of their two hour meeting. All right. So, um, does anybody have any questions so far? Please feel free to um, put some questions in the chat box if you uh, need any kind of clarification as we go through. So you can go to the next slide, Kim. So um, planning for our lay leader training, like I said before, we had four that were identified out of the group to be the lay leaders for this group. Um, and we used the Faithful Families Hybrid Virtual Programming Discussion Guide. And we, during the training, we shared that with them. And on the screen, you can see, like it has on there for lesson one, uh, what the lay leader can do and say, and what kind of like poems or scriptures or um, words that they want to use to tie the um, lesson together. And then it had like specific questions for EB and I as the facilitators to ask as well as the lay leaders. So we shared this discussion guide with them and kind of went through it um, each week before um, the actual lesson to go over like our plan and what our lesson flow was going to be. So um, they could use those prompts um, during the class to make sure that they ask some of those key questions to really get the conversations going. All right, so that is just a little bit of background on how we got started. So now I'm going to turn it over to EB so she can give you kind of some more details of exactly on our outline of class. Thank you, Lauren. Um, so um, like Lauren said, we had there was a collection of of churches so uh, you know we started out with like 14 churches and a couple community centers um and each church uh or faith community um had about two or three it varied team um that attended these um these monthly meetings and um they request it you know we have all these great resources that are virtual um, and so we were able to utilize some of those but we also realized that um, they a lot of them didn't prefer to, especially to use uh, to fill out paperwork and try to do it electronically they weren't comfortable with that and so they wanted, handouts they wanted us to provide them with 
um, with all their materials. So she, um, like Lauren said, our partner, um, her, her name is Kayla, and she was just wonderful. Um, she's housed at the hospital, um, and so that was kind of a neutral area or, you know, a neutral spot. And how we did this is we actually um, put together a packet or a, um, a bag or um, a kit um, each month for each faith community. And it had handouts for that week. We, they got them about a week early. Um, and so they received their handouts, any um, education extenders um, that for the week. Uh, and um, I'll tell you how we did the, the and, a, and a few other things. Um, so when we logged on, um, they already had their materials in front of them. Um, so how what we did is we kind of had a, 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 an, this is an outline of our portion of their meeting. Um, we were coming in, like she said, to an already established meeting. So um, they were customary to open with prayer um, and they continue to do that. Um, they the lay leaders uh, held or used the um, resource that we had given them as far as um, being able to connect um, some of their faith messages um, to their to our lessons. And um, so we always had them start the meeting with prayer. I did an introduction usually to what um, the lesson was going to be for the or was going to be for the this the current um, session, but and then uh, and also did a reflection of um, what they had done from the week or the month past, and then we used the pre-recorded lesson videos, and they were they're about ten minutes long, um, and then spent a little time after that to discuss what they what was in the the videos what the key messages were I referred to their handouts um, and addre addressed any questions that they had and we turned it back over to the lay leader for them to um, do their their part on how to connect um, the scripture or um, how they could relate the message and um, take it back within their faith um, communities. We did a move more break. Um, and then we also had the pre-recorded uh, recipe videos. And so um, they, and this is where another great partnership came in um, because we were part of um, using this, this health coalition. They uh, agreed to give each faith community a $25 gift card or um, Walmart card for them to purchase the foods and be able to taste or to try the recipes um, before the, our, our meetings. And so I'll go into a little bit more of that, but they actually watched the video, but they will have already have tried this recipe as well. So we um, had some discussion there. Um, group discussions, these were really good um, because these were ways that it started out a little slow, but then as everyone got, you know, um, more comfortable, they were willing to share some of the ideas and things that, that they had done to, to help share, take the information back to their churches or faith communities. We did a monthly drawing and um, they enjoyed that very much. And how we did the drawing is we did we um, we did the drawing by community, not by individual, but by the faith community. Um, and I'll tell you about some of those and some of the um, the things that we used um, as prizes. And and that was a gr another grant um, that funded those materials. 
And then we always um, ended ours with a personal goal. So we really tried to give them uh, something to take back um, for them to collect and take back to their, their faith community to be able to share um, and discuss with their community, with their faith community, but I also, we, we wanted them to be able to set personal goals as well, and so, um, and they aligned with the um, curriculum. Any questions about, that was kind of the layout of our section. All right, you can go to the next slide. So these are some of the taste tests. So what they did, um, like I said, we, we provided them with a gift card and then with their handouts, they received the recipes. So they were able to pick up their packet, their, their packet from Kayla, at which had um, their gift cards in them. And it was a week ahead of time. And so they were charged with preparing the recipe um, taste testing it, taking pictures, and, sent, and they sent them back to Kayla. Um, and so these are just some of the pictures that they shared, which was wonderful, um, of them preparing some of the different dishes that um, we, that corresponded with our lessons. Um, they shared um, how it went, um, what went well, what didn't go well with the recipes, um, and different faith communities um, handled this differently. Some of them um, alternated um, who tried the recipe um, individually because they were not comfortable getting together at all um, because, of the because of COVID guidelines. Others you can see actually gathered in, within a, in a smaller group in their church um, kitchens, you can see there, and um, prepared some of the recipes together as a smaller group. And you can advance. And these are just a few more of um, the recipes and things that, um, that they sent in. And I think they did really well. And this was a way that that they were able to actually try the food. Um, I think that taste testing and recipes is hugely important. And I think them actually doing it hands-on um, themselves uh, was very ben beneficial. And then the support when they were able to come back and discuss it um, together. All right, okay. you can, go ahead. Can I, um, you touched yes. on that a little bit and, um, I wanted to expand on it about like the PSE work that went along with it. Mm -hmm. So each week, usually at the end, when we they had like a personal challenge, we also provided um, kind of more details of like those PSE questions that are built into the curriculum. Mm -hmm. So whether that was sharing um, some example policies of like a water pitcher policy or um, we kind of, when we got those community assessment, the faith community assessments back, EB and I kind of went through each individual faith community and we ended up setting up a spreadsheet for it to um, identify exactly what their goals and interests were in. And so we kind of used that each um, lesson to kind of build upon that because they all had you know different goals and um plans but and we knew that they would all be going out to their individual communities to um kind of develop this PSE work but that's kind of what we used um each time we met to kind of build upon to get like get them like bouncing ideas off of each other and kind of um, brainstorming on some of that PSE work. So I just wanted to mention that real quick. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions so far? Okay, you can advance to the next slide. Okay, so what we just, we, Lauren and I wanted to, um, 
have things that um, when we we were going to do, we decided to to do the monthly drawings and we wanted it to be things that um, they could use within their faith community. Um, these were not just individual uh, door prizes. These were door prizes for the faith community. So, um, for example, this the picture there that that is actually the Partners in Faith logo. And um, since you know this was um, these were all communities within the Partners in Faith um, coalition, we made uh, a set of aprons with their logo on it. And so that's what an apron with their logo that we made. And we, um, so it was a, a set, I think about six uh, or eight, I can't remember, um, of aprons that they um, received um, for their faith community. Um, we did an outdoor gardening kit. So you, we did an indoor gardening kit with herbs. We did stretch band, a set of stretch bands, not just a stretch band. Um, food safety kits, and so food thermometers and um, refrigerator thermometer. You know, different. Um, we did baskets or or bags. Um, water pitchers. When we did water pitchers, we included a sample water pitcher policy. So you'll notice that some of these things or most of these things, though, they were all enhancements of the lessons, but also encouragement to do some of the PSE work um, as well. And they enjoyed that. Um, and, oh, and if, um, when, as we were doing the drawings, if they were not, if someone was not present from their church, we drew again. So that was trying to, to make sure that we were um, having representation at a, each meeting. Um, these were all a, um, funded through a healthcare um, organization grant. Uh, so they were, um, they were a, we were able to, to give nice, um, nice prizes. So you can go to the next one. All right, so um, <laughs> we could talk a long time about successes and challenges, right? Uh, so the some of the successes, definitely the partnerships, um, we could not have done it without Kayla um, with RVCHI, which it are, it's our local um, community health initiative. She was that key person. Um, she did a, an amazing job of sending out um, reminders. She, uh, you know, text messages and email address. You know, she had contact with them um and, and a history with them and so it was easier for you know she was very willing to be that contact to get information out um this group like we said they they did not prefer to do paperwork um electronically unfortunately they wanted to do paperwork um written paperwork and so she was kind of one to help us get them the paperwork and try to get that back, um, which I'll talk a little bit more about that with challenges, but that that got to be a challenge is getting the paperwork back was a challenge for us. Um, it did this, um, the grant funding, like I said, it, it awarded us, um, we, we not only pulled from one grant, we pulled from a couple of different funding sources to be able to do the $25 gift cards for them to be able to do the food taste testings and then also the um, door prizes. Um, 
Oh, and they also in there, um, they did get um, extenders, education extenders that were more of a per on a personal level, like, um, you know, water bottles and things that we would normally give with, um, with a curriculum in education. It did lead the, the fateful um, family, you know, this program, it did lead to some additional um, programming opportunities. Uh, we had several churches that were interested in having um, additional education, but opening it up to their, um, their faith communities in a larger scale. So um, I followed up with the four lesson chronic disease um, lessons, uh, in a, but that ended up being a small group um, because of challenges with with technology a little bit and um and internet access um it was one thing that we did not have to build was um an interest in health this group is already established and they are they already met on a monthly basis. They were used to meeting on this monthly basis at this specific time. We did their time at you know their day that they were used already accustomed to. They were accustomed to doing having health initiatives. That was that's the whole purpose of that group, and so um, that worked really well. Uh, one thing that um, one of my partners did, um, she. It was great. She did uh, kept attendance for us. Sounds doesn't sound like a lot, but it really is when you are or you know when you are trying to um, to coordinate the program because and the next one is staying organized because we were showing um, a pre recorded lesson lessons. We were doing pre recorded. Um, taste testing um, videos. We were doing, uh, using an electronic um, program for our drawings. Um, and we had different, uh, we were kind of bouncing back from person to person. And so, you know, just trying to stay organized. Um, what I did is is try to, to share everything. We used, a go we used Google. Uh, docs or a Google spreadsheet, and um, so everybody was kind of on the same plate, on the same page with organizing the what's you know how everything was going to flow, and um, also what all the links were going to be, because um, virtually we know a lot of things happen, um, and sometimes you know, a video won't play or, you know, on one person's computer. So that way we had multiple people that had access to what we were, uh, the materials. Um, technology was a, a challenge for us. We're in rural North Carolina um, and we had uh, several, we have a lot of, of, um, of dead spots for internet um, where we just do not have, a lot of people don't have access to, um, to internet. So that was definitely an issue. Um, when we say the paper forms, that's what they requested. We, um, we provided them with both. We provided them with an electronic forms and some people use that. But for the majority, they wanted to do to fill it, fill out paperwork. And um, so the goal was or the thought was <laughs> the idea was one month to send the paperwork. And then when they came to pick up their their supplies for the next month to return the forms. Um, so it became a little bit of a challenge trying to just get every, you know, all the forms back together. Um, and one of the things is, you know, we had a, a, a contact who was trying at each faith community and they were, and they had a group that they were trying to get it from. So we were kind, it was, 
it was several levels out of, of um, having to change hands, that, that paperwork. And so that was a bit of a challenge. And then trying to do PSE work virtually, um, one of the biggest challenges is, you know, some of the things that we were talking about, you know, they, they were, you know, well, we want to do a water pitcher policy, but we're not meeting. We're not having meetings. We, you know, so that, you know, that's not a, a priority right now. Or, you know, serving, you know, healthy foods. We're not serving food right now. And so, um, but we were able to identify what some of those things are. So as things are starting, you know, as they're starting to come back together, these are things, we have a list. You know, um, Lauren said we took all, we went through those assessments with a fine tooth comb. We made a spreadsheet. And so we have um, a list of what each faith community is interested in doing and how we can um, go back and help with that. Um, you can go to the next slide. If it's okay, I'm going to um, pause for just a second. There's a couple of questions in the oh, um, chat box. So I wanted to bring those to your attention um, maybe really quickly before we move on. Sure. Um, Great. Zavanya asked, um, did you ever do the lessons before the hands-on activities rather than after? Um, and if so, was it more or less effective? the hands-on activities as are um like the taste to where they where they um were cooking the their food is that i'm thinking that's probably what she means but yep yes okay um no we did not um so i i know they did see the see the recording after they had already cooked the 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 recipe but um no we did not do it that way, um, and, and in hindsight, that's probably a good idea um, for them to be able to see that um, the video. And actually, as we're talking about it, it might have been even been a good idea to send the video um, with the email, um, a reminder email, uh, maybe the week before. Uh, but we, the reason that that they got it the week they. Um, we were able to give them that gift card um, for them to be able to go and purchase um, along with the handouts. But in hindsight, you're you're right. No, we 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 didn't do that. Could be an interesting thing for next time, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Great suggestion. Thank you. Um, so the other question we have from Bonnie um, is, were the Move More segments live, um, virtually live, um, or via video, like a pre-recorded video? That was Lauren. <laughs> we did those live, and I really encourage, like if you try to do um, Faithful Families um, virtually, to do those live um, Move More activities because they had a great time, even if it was just five minutes of some sort of stretching activity or something, but they really enjoyed those Move More pieces. Definitely. I love that. Uh, it's a nice break from, from the video call. <laughs> All right. It, it really is. And they, um, you know, that we were only a portion of their call and, you know, because after we finished, they had other business, um, you know, in their business meeting. So um, it was really a good break for them. Thank you. All right. I'm going to advance to the next. Okay. Here you go. So um, we wanted, Lauren and I were, were brainstorming and trying to think about what, um, kind of lessons learned and some definite things that suggestions that we would have if you ended up um, doing this um, in this format. So one would be, um, I found it very beneficial to uh, use Google 
um, a Google Drive, whether it be a spreadsheet or a, a um, doc, just a, a document where you could kind of keep um, keep everything organized. It was very beneficial to have more than one person um, because we did run into times where there were um, snags. My I couldn't get the video to work, or and Lauren could play it, or. Um, <clears throat> you know, different little snags like that. It was just good to be able to 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 have that. Also, to be able to to break up some of the responsibility of or some of the sections, we kind of bounce back and forth and um, were able to do different set segments. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um. I would definitely say one of the biggest challenges we had was getting paperwork back if they are unable to do electronic paperwork um, I would definitely recommend if there was one time when you could have a one-on-one a, a -on -one meetings or um, if you could fit, fi figure out a way to have small group meetings or something to have the paperwork done that you would be able to have it um, and not rely on several chains of, of changing hands to um, get your paperwork back, because that was a challenge. Um, provide, providing training um, for the use of virtual plat platform. So, you know, if our population um, or the the our audience was not all the majority were not very um, computer savvy. Um, they had challenges with different formats. We ended up changing formats, um, but um, just making sure that you have um, a good secure um, network uh, or uh, platform that you're using and that the, the um, audience knows how to use it. Also have it in that having a moderator. So um, having a secure site or a secure platform and maybe having a waiting room that a moderator could let in the participants and check off or have a password, that type thing. Um, we would definitely recommend that as well. Anything you can think of to add, Lauren? Um, I think you covered all of it, but part of what like the moderator did was um, keep up with the roster to be able to check off which faith community was there and which representatives were there. Um, so that was really helpful that um, our partner kept up with that roster to be able to report back to us. Um, because like Evie said, there were like 17 or 18 different faith communities on here. And then if they had two or three people uh, maybe that were interchanging coming to the group, um, our partner knew who all of those people were. So that was definitely a huge help to have someone um, do that kind of roster and checking attendance for us. Um, and then I will say by the end of all of our sessions, <laughs> um, that the meetings got better and better. Um, especially with the use of the virtual platform, because like EB said, we started out with one and then switched um, back to one they were more familiar with. Um, and so the interaction we got between everyone um, on the meeting and the participation, um, it was really good. And they came up, they had some really good discussions about each lesson and what their like wellness goals were. So, um, that was um, really good that they were able to have those good deep discussions. And then sometimes EB and I would stay on for like the rest of their meeting. And that's where we learned kind of some more details and were able to hear them like pull in information that um, they were having or like their announcements, like what 
um, events or whether they were virtual or in person or things they had going on in their communities. So um, it was a really good um, collaboration and um, a partnership that we were able to be a part of and be able to provide um, faithful families to them. You can um, go to the next slide. So we are here. Give us some questions. What do you um, do? You see this working in any of your your faith communities or in your areas? Hi, this is Carmen Hernandez, DOH in Citrus County, Florida. Um, we had a good momentum going before COVID hit, and I am finding it difficult to get that momentum going again. There's so much hesitancy in allowing, you know, outside people to come in, but they still congregate in at the church and they still have their potlucks. But I'm just finding it a little difficult to be able to penetrate those <laughs> inner circles again. They're, they they appear to be willing, but it's just someone, I hate using this frame of reference, but pulling the trigger saying, yes, come this Sunday, come this Saturday. Everyone is yes, 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 but nothing definitive. Yes. Yeah. Well, I will say I, um, it took, you know, at the beginning, Lauren um, mentioned that, um, you know, this committee themselves, the Partners in Faith, they had been meeting for a couple of years. I mean, we went in, I went in myself, Lauren went in separately at a different time. Um, another health educator went in and um, at different times trying, you know, saying we have this great program, you know, we can come into your churches, we'll do taste testing, you know, all of this. Mm -hmm. And for two years, nobody at all um, had, you know, would, would be that pull the trigger person, you know, mm -hmm. nobody did that. And then we finally got that one church and then they went back and were talking about it with other churches and how they enjoyed it. And, and that's how this came about. So hopefully you'll get that one Sometimes that's all it takes is that one. True, uh, true. Advocate. So persistence is key. Just keep Persistent, trying. Yep, yep. It took us a while too. Okay. Yeah, and then making sure to um, offer that you can, um, you know, you can provide this program to however it's convenient and comfortable mm -hmm. to them, whether they mm -hmm. um, prefer um, to have the videos and do it on their own. And then you can have like some open time at some point with them or a way for them to submit questions to you. But just, um, I would definitely say be as open to them as you can and let them know like all the different ways that you could implement this program, whether it's in-person or strictly virtual or like this hybrid um, type um, deal, but I think maybe, you know, as time goes on, they'll become more comfortable and then having that key um, champion to really, you know, see the, the value and what this program can do and trying to be that key contact person for you to try to try to recruit those people to come to your, to come to the program. And I'm very aware of, um, being the Department of Health, you know, everybody thinks you're calling about COVID and I make it very clear, I'm not calling about COVID, I'm calling about your wellness, <laughs> you know, overall wellness. I don't even, you know, and unfortunately I tried not to even use the word COVID, but it always came up. So I figured, let me lead with, that's not what I'm calling about. And it was like, okay, let me discuss it with the elders of the church. Let me discuss it with our deacon, our pastor. And then there's just, it's crickets after that. So I'll just keep trying. Are there are any other questions? Or maybe even if you haven't done faithful families, if anyone has 
um, implemented any other um, programs since the pandemic started? Like, does anybody have any tips or suggestions for each other? I'll just make sure that they're um, to read these ones in the chat since um, there may be people joining us by phone. But Betty um, says that um, that Morgan King with um, NC State Extension will be doing a um, Faithful Families program um, for a church in her community later in the month. So it sounds like some people are starting to sort of um, get back on the <laughs> the horse in the community. I know it's been a hard time, and Carmen definitely has spoken to that. Um, and and hopefully we'll start seeing things to transition. Um, and uh, Miriam um, said that she has been facilitating a health and wellness class um, called Creation Health um, and um, would love to bring this program to um, church schools and, and uh, her community. So I don't know, Miriam, if you um, feel led to, <laughs> to tell us a little bit more about that Creation Health um, program, feel free to do that. Um, Um, I have a question for you since we're talking about sort of the transition back to um, hopefully what maybe will be post pandemic. Um, have you heard, gotten any feedback from the lay leaders that you worked with about how they were able to bring those, um, the sort of education pieces and PSE pieces back to their communities? And it sounds like you're still maybe following up and working with them in the long term to maybe transition um, some of those PSE changes when we're able to be back in person and things start to look a little bit more normal. But I'm just curious if you've heard back from any of them about how it went back in their own faith communities. Um, I'll speak to that. I um, have reached out to several of, of the churches who are working on some specific um, goals and, and um, periodically. And um, the I will say there have been changes in the last probably two weeks it, locally on our county level as far as restrictions and things. Um, there have been some changes. The last time that I reached out, um, they had not gone back um, to in-person uh, at, at this time. So, uh, you know, I, I'm trying to, I'm, you know, keeping communication open and um, it may end up that uh, I will have the opportunity or to go in and actually do the program when there's more, when we're in uh, person, when they're back in person, that um, we'll be able to go do some programming specifically at the church for um, the faith communities as a whole, or, you know, individually as well. So, um, but we're we're still following up. I think it's going to be an ongoing conversation. Um, I know it. I know it is. It's an, it's an ongoing um, changes, and and we're kind of still navigating very carefully how we are doing program, uh, or and how they their comfort levels because it, it it's very different for you know we had fourteen different organizations and they are all at different levels and and have different feelings so a lot of the a lot of their uh, initiatives and things that they said that they had a, a, a an interest in I mean unfortunately just kind of stopped and everybody just kind of hunkered you know down but it's starting to open up a little bit now and one of the other things we were able to connect them with was the Faithful Families Virtual Walking Challenge. Mm -hmm. That was kind of like one of our topics um, to kind of like our personal challenges at the end of the meeting. And I believe they were kind of trying to challenge each other for each um, faith community to sign up. And I don't remember how many of them um, signed up individually, but I do know that at least one of them signed up for that challenge um and they really enjoyed that walking challenge 
And um, I'm trying to think of something else like when, like last summer when we did um, a walk audit in one of the communities, one of the, um, like the local health coalition um, representative that was part of that meeting was also at um, the walk audit. So um, I feel like when, since we had such a widespread of faith communities, like representing really from like the whole entire county, it was from all over. Um, when we are able to get involved in the individual communities, we have, um, you know, that partner, we have an established relationship so that we can um, pull from that and stay involved moving forward. But I think, um, let's see, Miriam, she was, she says she's ready now to share about um, her creation health. Yes, thank you. So I have been wanting to connect with you ladies for a long time. So this is a very happy day for me. So Creation Health has been a program that we've ran here at our local school district for about eight years now. We have about 800 of our parent academy um, participants who have gone through the program. It is a faith-based program. It was developed at the Florida hospital. And so one of the challenges was how to incorporate a faith-based curriculum into our schools. I work as the health center specialist for our schools, uh, school district. And what we did is we created a waiver. So participants are able to register as an extracurricular class. And the principles of creation are simple yet very deep in terms of how integrated into health and wellness you want to go. So uh, choice, rest, environment, activity, trust, interpersonal relationships, outlook, and nutrition. And we partnered with our school-based health center to be able to bring them um, lab service, we were able to check like uh, their height and their weight, and we were able to incorporate some of those services for each participant. Then we um, created a big graduation service here at the school. So the campuses integrated it. So it was beautiful how we were able to connect the clinic, the schools. And during the pandemic, because we couldn't have a lot of folks on campus, we used our church. So my husband and I are also pastors of a, of a church and we used our campus. And what we realized was that many, many people were starting to really look at their health and wellness as a form of worship to God, as a form of responsibility to taking care of our temple. So we were able to have three community classes and it was such a blessing, but I feel like Healthy Families is really integrating much more than just a health and wellness. It's just, it's an infrastructure for families to really engage and create some, some changes. So I think it's very compatible, both curriculums. I just felt like I wanted um, to bring in something that was created for churches versus me trying to bring in something that was created for clinics into the church. So I think there's a question, how did the waiver work? So the waiver, it had three different um, boxes that they were to sign. The first one was, um, I'm able to sit, bend, squat, because we did some physical activity in the class. The second one was, um, let's see, I may have the waiver here. But the third one was that I agree that I'm not going to be asked to join any church, religion, or affiliation. And so once they marked that and they signed that, then then we kept it on file. We've never had to use it in the eight years. It never, never ever became an issue, um, which I'm really, really happy about. But it was so beautiful to see how many of the participants actually do want to integrate their faith into their health. They want to um, talk about how faith has helped them heal with many of their, their challenges, but also how they do believe that having a relationship with God is important for their physical, spiritual, and emotional well-being. So I do have some, some drafts that I created that I'm happy to share. Um, 
I'm a little sad to, to share that Creation Health is going through some changes. They're now calling it Creation Life, and it looks like they do want to keep this curriculum now in the hospitals. So hopefully with healthy families, um, some curriculum can be created that's very similar to this. Maybe it's, maybe it's time to create our own new curriculum. <laughs> Thanks so much for sharing, Miriam, and um, feel free to reach out to Annie or I. We'd love to um, connect with you and see um, how you're using um, Faithful Families, if you are, um, or how you might be able to, um, to use that where you are. Um, I want to be mindful of everyone's time because it is two o'clock, and especially of Lauren and Evie's time, since they um, have so graciously offered to be here for this hour. Um, if you have other questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to connect you with Lauren or Evie um, and... Um, and um, if you have any questions to pass those along or um, I'll allow them to, if they want to, to put their um, email addresses in the chat if they choose, but otherwise I'm happy to um, sort of be a go-between. Um, but we really, really appreciate um, all that you do, Lauren and Evie, um, in your communities and for your willingness to um, come and share with us today. And really appreciate all of you for being here. Um, it's good to see some of you virtually, <laughs> even if it's just your name um, after some time. So. Um, I hope that you all are able to go out and in North Carolina, at least where we are today, it is beautiful outside. So I hope that everyone is able to um, take a little bit of time and enjoy the sunshine um, and a little tiny bit of spring maybe for some of us. So um, thank you all and um, keep an eye out. We will post the recording um, on our website in the webinar archive uh, in the coming week or so. Thanks everybody. Bye. Bye.